Senate finally agrees for INEC to transmit elections electronically. The upper chamber also approved direct primaries for political parties and a move which the People's Democratic Party describes as retrogressive. And of course, the Secretary of the Southwest Agenda for Asiwaju Swaga speaks on the movement. We're bringing you a recorded version of it. Please stay with us because this is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anako. The Senate has passed a bill to rescind its decision, which subjected the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, to seek approval from the Nigerian Communications Commission before it could transmit elections results electronically. Now, the Senate also voted in support of the conduct of party primaries only by direct method. Meanwhile, the People's Democratic Party, PDP, has described the approval of direct primaries for all political parties by the Senate as retrogressive. Well, joining us to break this down is journalist Carl Chinedu. Um, we also have political analyst Achike Chude and Nick Agule. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. All right. I'll start with you. Yes, I'll start with you, Mr. Chude. Um, let's look at the issue of direct primaries. It's 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 been it's been brought up before, while the Senate was still mulling over the um, Electoral Act bill before it, it becomes law. Um, many kicked against it and many applauded it as a way of deepening democracy. But what are your thoughts? You know, uh, my, my, my thoughts of what, what just happened at the Senate in regards to the... To, to direct uh, primaries. With the approval for electronic... Uh, no, um, for direct primaries. Or transmission. Yeah. For direct primaries. Okay. Yeah, well, well I, I, I mean, the, the, yeah, there, are, there are different schools of thoughts. Um, the, uh, some of the, some of the uh, members of the other political parties uh, of the view that um, uh, uh, the, the Senate, that they should be allowed, that the political party should be allowed to choose the kind of primary, you know, that they are comfortable with. Uh, you, you know, so, so it's not something, it's a something that has been received with mixed uh, results. Um, but, but, but beyond beyond that, I, I think, look, even within, depending on, on the kind of uh, primary that is uh, decided upon, I think to a very large extent, I would say that for as long as I mean the political parties are fairly independent and that they, they are in a position to make a rules for themselves on, on how they want to go about you know doing uh, kind of how uh, about their activities do about their activities as a political party. Uh, you know, that it should have been my, my view really that they be allowed to to make a choice on on, on, on what system they want to use uh, for their primaries. But regardless of that. Uh, no matter the system that is chosen, even within the context of that system that is chosen, uh, you know they can always go out of their way to ensure transparency. You know to uh, to ensure that uh, there is a um, uh, uh, free exercise of uh, of democratic franchise within within the party uh, itself. Of course, you know that um, internal party issues have been the bane of most of the political parties uh, since uh, the. Uh, the advent of uh, of, of this uh, the democracy from 1999 uh, most of the parties have been accused of not uh, having internal democratic uh, uh, party mechanisms. And so, even if even if that decision has been taken to them, I mean, on their behalf uh, by the Senate, mm -hmm. they can still go ahead uh, regardless of that and see and to ensure that um, that uh, their primaries are done in a way that is free and fair, devoid of. Uh, of rancor and of fairness. And so I do not think it is so much of a big deal. Hmm. Interesting. Carl, um, you're a journalist. A, a, lot of, a, a lot of people, um, like, I've spoken about this with some people, especially members of the PDP, who seem to be kicking against it, uh, say that every party does have a constitution that the members of the party abide by. And they're saying they have a choice to decide if they want to have direct primaries 
or they want to have consensus candidates. I mean, even the APC, uh, I think a, a mem um, one of the members, uh, former councillors or chairman here in Lagos State, if I'm not mistaken, has asked that the party allow for consensus candidates, um, you know, uh, in, in some of the um, primaries which is something that most political parties have the right to do. So uh, if the PDP seems to be not OK with this, um, why do you think that the Senate is pushing this down the throats of the political parties? Let's not forget that the Senate is also, of course, uh, filled with members who cut across the APC and the PDP who have different styles of primaries. I think that I should not be talking about at least I need the election. Well, the parties are that's for now. Carl, it's, it's very difficult to hear you. I don't know what the problem is. I think we're having connection issues. But I'll throw the question to Ms. Agule, who's just joining us. Let's see if we can fix um, Carl's line. Mr. Goulet, uh, the PDP is saying that this is not in any way deepening the de de democracy in the country and, of course, internal party democracies. They think that this is retrogressing uh, or retrogressive for um, the democratic process that they are pointing to since 1999 until now. They do not understand why the National Assembly is choosing to toe this line. What are your thoughts? Mr. Goulet, can you hear me? Uh, I think we're ha also having connection issues with Agule. Let's move on to other issues. Now, um, let's talk about the transmission of results. This, is, this has been an issue, um, and this is for you, Achike, because you seem to be the only one who's on. Um, this is an issue that you and I, we've spoken about. Uh, many have kicked against and wondered why um, you know, it's taken the National Assembly so long to make a decision on it. But now they've given it a nod. Most will say they've bowed to pressure. Now, going forward, do we see that this is going to maybe first things first happen during the Anambra elections? Is that going to be a litmus test of sorts? Can we rely on it and say that, you know, as a, as a matter of fact, our elections can at least start to be free, fair, and credible? Carl, uh, well, okay, I, Mr. Chike today, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. All right, go well. ahead. Okay, uh, yeah, I didn't know that, that was for me. It was for you. You're the only one who's well, now. Well, well, look, Nigerians, Nigerians had, had made up their mind uh, before their hope were dashed uh, by the Senate about uh, the kind of, um, about what was expected with regard to INEC um, when it comes to putting, what happens after the voting takes place. A lot of Nigerians uh, resolved, you know, unanimously, that votes should be transmitted. And it is especially, that, 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 that viewpoint was made especially against the backdrop of the election that took place in Odo State and then in Odo State. Of course, you know that we had something similar to transmission of electronic results with the ZPAC uh, that, that, you know, uh, during that election. Uh, and it was highly, highly successful. So a lot of people have looked forward to Nigeria advancing its, um, you know, electoral uh, uh, practices, uh, you know, by improving on what you already have on ground. Mm -hmm. uh, that was what was expected. Uh, so, uh, and, and a lot of organizations, especially civil society organizations, the media and so many other groups in this country had worked towards, you know, um, and, and done so much work in propagating use of um, transition of electronics uh, 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 of the results electronically after the election. So it was a very rude shock for Nigerians when in it. In fact, this is even against the recommendation of the House of Representatives that uh, led the transmission of, uh, of results at, at the doorstep of INEC. But when it got to the Senate, it was a completely different ballgame. Mm -hmm. They rejected it entirely. And now led it at the doorstep of uh, uh, you, you, you know, of uh, the National um, of, of Nigeria Telecommunications Commission, which was exceedingly very strange. It is not an electoral body. Uh, you know, and the INEC had said that they were in a position that they had the technology, you know, to run, to transmit the election, and that the, the network providers, you know, were in a, had already assured them that they had the capacity 
you know, to help INEC transmit this result electronically. So it was a very big shock when the Senate, uh, it, 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 you know, uh, gave that responsibility to the body that had nothing to do with election in this country, the Nigerian Telecommunication mm -hmm. Commission. That was a shock. And Nigerians did not find it very, very funny at all. You know, so the backlash, I think that what the Senate has done, I mean, it's a good thing they have, they, you know, what they have done. Mm -hmm. And in, in saying that, I think in a way they have responded positively to the yearnings of Nigerians because Nigerians were very coordinated of, of their actions at uh, that particular point in time. And they, it, 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 they have shown that somehow that they have the capacity to feel the force of the people. And, uh, and so it's, 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 it's the right thing to do. INEC, INEC has said that they are in a position to transmit this result yes. successfully. And I believe that, 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 they, that they can do it. So, uh, you so, know, so, so, uh, so it is, it's a good thing. Moving forward from that, the ball seems to be now be in the court of political parties and their members to canvass for votes because... I'm guessing that this now means that it's not going to be business as usual. And so there has to be a lot more work done by political parties because we can't, one way or the other, this might eliminate, you know, um, the vote buying or the ridiculousness of, you know, votes changing before the results get to INEC. So what do you think is ahead of political parties and their members, especially as we look to Anambra as the first litmus test after the National Assembly has given it a nod? Well, well I, I, I didn't get all you said, but I, I think um, I got matters of what we are talking about. So the, the, the I, I next is, it finds itself in the unique uh, position of uh, testing uh, the, uh, their capacity with uh, the Anambra election. That is their capacity to transmit the results. So a lot of people have been watching them closely. You know, but of course, uh, INEC already has its, its uh, job cut out for it. Uh, because of uh, the crisis and the insecurity in uh, Anambra State and the uncertainty surrounding the election. But of course, there are so many other good things about uh, the electronic voting. I think it, it ensures a very large extent, you know, transparency, just better transparency in the electoral process. Uh, and, you know, at the same time, it makes it difficult uh, for Tom, uh, you, you know, to play the kind of role that they have always played uh, in the election, because what it means is that once an election has been successfully conducted, immediately you, tra you transmit this, this result electronically. And once that is done, there is nothing that, that uh, you know, talk uh, or miscreants can do. They can take away the ballot boxes with all the papers inside. It changes nothing, because the results have already gone somewhere. Uh, you know, so I, 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 and so it also means that, um, Perhaps the politicians will spend less money on uh, some of these uh, uh, talks uh, that they keep on employing, and then of course life will be will be much safer, uh, you know, because uh, it, it will be less risky uh, for people that you know to uh, uh, be involved in uh, you know elections only to have uh, themselves uh, being attacked by some of these uh, you know party stalwarts or talks. All right, let me see if we can get Carl back on the line. Carl, can you hear me? Uh, unfortunately, we, Carl can't hear me. Um, Mr. Julie, can you hear me? Yes, I, yeah, I, I can't do I'm struggling to, yeah, but I can hear you. Okay, Mr. Julie, this question goes to you. Many have criticized the electoral process in Nigeria as that which is more of money than, um, you know, selling the candidates for who he is and what his capabilities are. Um, so now that we have this nod for the electronic uh, trans transfer, transmitting of results, starting from um, Anambra, which is the closest uh, elections that we're going to have, um, just like I asked um, Achike Chude, is this going to increase the capacity of money politics or is it going to shrink it? Are we now going to see political parties canvassing um, for their candidates more other than the normal sharing of monies and sudden food materials just to help um, get votes. What do you see happening? Yeah, so, so uh, uh, regardless of uh, the approval for the transmission of the uh, results, it has no bearing. It has nothing to do with um, how much uh, politicians uh, spend uh, during the you know, electoral uh, you know, uh, process. Uh, the reality is that uh, there is a failure on all sides, especially on the part of INET, 
uh, you know, to stick to the rules that it has put in place. There are so, so many, you know, punishments or fines uh, for for candidates who spend um, a, 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 a far beyond the, the, the provisions of uh, the law. And, you know, we, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure we, we know that for every category of uh, office that is being contested for that, there is, there, you know, there are certain sorts of uh, money that are attached to that office in terms of uh, the obligations of politicians to spend money. They are not uh, supposed to uh, trade, uh, you know, uh, those amounts of money. Uh, but we know that this is just that it is being observed in the bridge. Uh, mm -hmm. The INEC has not, has lacked the political will to actually do anything about that. But, and but, in that, but, I, and but in that, INEC is an electoral body. They're an umpire. They're not a law enforcement agent uh, agency. And this is, this is the, the, this is the case they always make. They can do certain things, but they, I mean, it stops no, somewhere. No, no, this no, is where law enforcement is, comes in. I have, I yeah, have no, covered it, elections where I see policemen in the midst of people sharing money and they take their share. What no, can an no, INEC official do in that instance? Yeah, I, no, no, there are, certain things, there are certain responsibilities that INEC has. INEC has jurisdiction over the polling, uh, over the election generally. So any malpractice, and what the police do is the security forces do is to give a lend, is to lend a helping hand to ensure that um, INEC's uh, responsibilities are carried out without without uh, you know any threat uh, to to public peace, uh, you know, and harmony. So INEC still has some responsibilities. You know, it's, it's like people who committing electoral offenses. It falls within the ambit of INEC. But what INEC does really is that in collaboration with the police, with the law enforcement officers, they also have the responsibility to ensure that people who contravene uh, the electoral law are arrested. INEC is not in a position to arrest, but INEC can do something to end getting some of these people arrested, you know, and being handed over to the, uh, you know, police for prosecution. That is what they are supposed to do. In fact, after the election in 2019, a lot of civil society organizations, including the, the, the civil society organization I belong to, the Nigerian Situation Room, kept on putting pressure on INEC with regards to all of the people they had promised they are going to be prosecuted for, you know, uh, various acts of uh, contravention of an electoral, uh, electoral law. Uh, you know, and so we kept on putting pressure on them, and then they themselves, in, in turn, were also trying to put pressure on the, on the police authorities. So that these people could be prosecuted successfully, uh, you know. So uh, uh, it, they, they, they have they have a, 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 a responsibility to ensure that uh, certain that the monies that have been earmarked to be spent by the politicians are not exceeded. This is within their responsibility. After all, it's also within their responsibility to monitor political parties and ensure that in terms of accountability by these political by these political parties, they're in terms of political party financing and auditing of the records of political parties, it is the responsibility also of INEC. Great. Let me talk about educating the populace, because I know that that responsibility is also that of INEC. They have voter education and a voter education um, department under INEC. Then people also talk about the National Orientation Agency and other bodies who take on the resp responsibility of educating the populace. Now, we're all very excited. People have been speaking about, you know, the Senate and the National Assembly allowing for this, um, you know, to go through. But on the other hand of direct primaries, how does that even affect the average Nigerian, especially now that we're asking that Nigerians get involved in partisan politics to be able to have a say? Do we can we still say that you know whoever a party throws up, whether it be through direct primaries or consensus candidates, that these people really reflect the will of the people? I, well, the, the the issue is um, when elections come and go, there are victors and there are losers. So if you say it is um, a general belief that the people have exercised their franchise. Yes, I know that in the midst of uh, widespread accusations of uh, rigging, for instance, or manipulation of, of votes and all that, you might not exactly say that uh, this has been a reflection of uh, the will of the people. But I think it also starts, first of all, with the turnout of uh, voters. How many people actually come out to vote during the election? 
Anambra State, an election is going to take place in, 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 in uh, Anambra State. Now, regardless of the threat by either IPOB or whichever group, you know, is uh, making threats uh, you know, about the election in Anambra State, the reality is that Anambra has always had about the lowest turnout of voters. Uh, in 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 in, uh, in elections and and you why know, do you, so and why do you think that is? Why do you think that there's such a level of voter apathy and it has been consistent over the years? Yeah, well, yeah, you know, yeah, that is down to a plethora of of issues. First of all, I think the, the primary you know uh, issue is that our people are not sufficiently educated, and I think you talked about them. Um, Education of uh, the of the Voters, people population. Yes, they are not sufficiently educated. A lot of our people uh, are not exactly very well informed. Uh, you know, when it comes to you know uh, politics, uh, you know, there are many of them are not politically conscious, and that in itself is a very dangerous situation because you know, for the people themselves, uh, democracy is about the people. So if the people uh, are not exactly uh, uh, do not invest in, the, in democracy, then you'll find out that ultimately they're going to be the ones who, you know, carrying the short end of, of the stick. Mm. You know, but beyond that again is the fact that politically the, the, the parties we have, and I'm talking about the two dominant political parties, are not essentially political parties in the real sense of of the word. You know, I see them more or less as a, a group of associations of association of people. You know, who just come together for the purpose of taking political power. But do you think? Do you think it's do you think it's deliberate? Do you, so, sorry well, to speak just, over the, you. The, can you hear me? Sorry, sorry to talk can over you. Hear me? you. Do you think it's deliberate what the political parties are doing? Because I also know that some level of voter education needs to come from the political parties across the country. But do you think there's some de deliberate move for these political parties not to educate voters? The people who they no, want to come is, out and it, vote, yeah, in a because way, it, it is, might it serve their deliberate. selfish interest. Because the, the people who make up these political parties, and I'm talking about the two, you know, dominant political parties, the people who make up these political parties, the big way, you know, the big shots in these parties are not people that are, are, are essentially interested in the welfare of of the Nigerian nation. Otherwise, you know, otherwise we will not have the kind of additional result you know, that their parties have posted over the years, whether it is the PDP, you know, or the APC. Look at the state of the economy today. Look at this security in the country. So, so we have a political party, or we have political parties that have dominated the political space in this country, and we are supposed to provide good governance for the people. The good governance we have not seen. So that tells you that there is a clear failure. And part of it, again, is that apart from the fact that the people themselves are not conscious enough to also understand their duty and their responsibility. It is because the duty of the political parties educate their people, first of all, along ideological lines. Unfortunately, the political parties in this country do not have any serious, you know, redeemable ideological uh, 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 um, uh, position. Uh, uh, you, you know? Uh, and, and, and so, and, and, and that's why if, if, if during the political during political discourse or during political debate, they do not talk about, you know, what exactly they are going to do for the people, how they are going to do this. They do not talk about how they are going to turn the economy around. They do not. They do not talk about how they will, you know, positively impact on the lives of the people. You understand what they are going to do, how they are going to do it, and the timeline within which to get these things done. You know, all they just. I mean, they, they just said the people that. Uh, that, you know, that they should just vote for them and that they are going to do something for them, but they do not specify what they are going to do. And the people do not ask. And why do the people do not ask? Because the people are bribed, you know, by the politicians to vote for them. Mm. You know, and so the politicians feel no obligation by the time they get to power, uh, you know, to respond to the needs and yearnings of the people because the people have, because the people have already been paid for their service. Okay. So this is, I mean, it's, 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 um, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a situation one can describe as between the devil and the deep blue sea. <laughs> so we find that for ourselves in a very terrible situation, and that is why there is nothing that is, there is nothing that is working for, for the country. Because we have a group of people that are not patriotic, that are not nationalistic, being, you know, in charge of uh, the country. Okay. Let me go to Nick. Uh, 
Nick, I think that you're back. Let's let's talk about, let's just do a follow-up on where Achike stopped. He's saying that our leaders, our politicians, do not necessarily have the best interest of the Nigerian voter or the voting populace at heart. Hence, the lack of voter education on the part of political parties. And that, I mean, the bulk of the work is on INEC to do some of this voter, voter education. We also have the NOA that we only see when it's close to election season. But for the Nigerian person who uh, has a, a voice, which is their vote, uh, what should we be doing to uh, empower ourselves so that when we're going to the polls, whether we be members of political parties or not, we know what to do as opposed to what we're made to do or what, what we're made to believe? Um, you th thank me? you very much. And I, I'm very sorry uh, for joining late. I have been battling with uh, network here. Almost everything in Nigeria is with tears. Uh, before I answer your question, uh, I would just like to make my intervention on the two topics that you have for discussion today. The first one being an electronic transmission of votes is a major development in our democracy. It is a very good thing that the Senate has finally done by approving electronic transmission of votes. Uh, the only thing I will ask I need to do is, as they transmit that vote, pulling unit by pulling unit, they need to publish the results, pulling unit by pulling unit. Because you see, Nigerians at the pulling unit are able to see or hear the results at their pulling unit. And then something happens in between when the votes are collected. People lose track of what the pooling unit results were when they are being aggregated. So INET needs to be publishing those results, pooling unit by pooling unit, so that Nigerians will technically become election watchers. And people will be able to confirm that, yes, at my pooling unit, this was a result that was declared and is on the board. The rest will just be addition. And also then for direct primaries, I also give kudos to the Senate for insisting on direct primaries because these political parties, as my co-panelists have been saying, they don't have the interest of Nigerians at heart. They normally throw to us candidates that are not fit enough for office. But if they have internal democracy where there is direct primaries and the members are able to decide who their candidates will be, I'm sure we're going to have better candidates than the current system where the party leaders decide on who they are going to throw up as a party candidate. Now, let me now then go to your question. Uh, the question is that how do we mobilize Nigerians to bring them to the ballot boxes? The point is here, I have been always advocating that the only way we can change this country, the only way we can get the leaders that we want the only legitimate and viable way that is less violent is to come out and vote. And each time I say that, I meet a lot of resistance from Nigerians. I've, I've, in fact, uh, what I see is cynicism, pessimism, and the fact that votes don't count and all but that. Can, and but can you blame the average Nigerian who feels that way, being that most of them have experienced violence, most of them have noticed that their votes don't necessarily count? Even though staying back at home also means that you've made a decision, it's a vote in one way or the other. So, but can you blame the average person who's pushing back when you say, come out and vote? Can you blame them? So here, like you rightly say, we have two decisions to make. We have a decision to sit at home and not step out. But the result of that decision is that nothing is going to change. In fact, things might even get worse. Mm. And then the other decision is to step out and vote, at least do your own civic duty by voting, and then let us see what happens. In this country, we have seen cases where votes have counted. There are many instances where votes have always counted. And if votes were not uh, to count, why would politicians be buying them? Politicians buy votes because they know the votes are counting. So it is a bit of a fallacy when Nigerians say that votes don't count. Sometimes... It is when the result is not as clear that people are able to manipulate it. The mm -hmm. result is so clear as in Nigeria's true power. Because, you see, the problem is that 
The people who come out now to vote, majority of them are those that will go and sell their votes for cheap. The people who will not take 500 naira or 1,000 naira to sell their votes, they are the ones sitting at home. The educated class, what to do, they are sitting at home. These are the people that need to come out. If they come out and overwhelm the process, then we are going to carry the day. The truth of the matter is that nothing is going to change in this country until we come out and start voting candidates based on their own individual capabilities and competencies. We shouldn't be voting on party lines or where a candidate comes from. And the only people who can take those decisions are those people who are sitting at home right now. They need to come out. And then there's another block. There's another block that can actually influence election results in this country that had not been allowed to vote. And I belong to that block. And that is the block of the diaspora. Nigerians in the diaspora have not been allowed to have a say in who governs But ha have we have we grown level. to that level where we can even allow diaspora voting if we've not been able to, I mean, master the voting within? Can't, should we not be able to get that right first before we start the diaspora voting? I'm not in any way kicking that, but I'm just saying, if we haven't mastered even the internal voting systems, is it okay to open the door to dias diaspora voting? I'm not sure what you mean by we have not mastered the internal voting system. I think we have, this, this democracy have had six elections, six elections already. And those elections have run, results have been declared. And how, so how has it progressed? Has it, has it been better than before or worse than the ones, the previous ones? That's, that's how we check it. Okay, so, so fine. So the, the point here is that the, the, the elections, uh, the, for the majority of the time, the elections have pockets of issues here and there. But at the end of the day, results are declared and people are sworn into office. So whatever the process is, let that process also be applicable to the diasporas. Let us also have our own ballot. And I can assure you that if ballot boxes are placed in Nigeria high commissions and embassies abroad and elections are conducted, those elections will be freer and fairer and more legitimate than what you will get here in Nigeria because most of these countries, like in the UK where, where I live, I, I can't see how somebody will snatch a ballot box and be running away with. The Metropolitan Police will just grab you, you know? And then the diasporas are well informed. The diasporas are the people that will not accept any cover from anybody. They are going to vote based on the capabilities of these candidates. And the diasporas can actually change the result of this election because, look, in the last presidential election, the vote margin between the winner and the second place candidate was about a million or less. And mm. we have more than probably 10, 20 million diasporas who, if they had voted, would have decided the election. So that's another block that needs to come. Okay. So for the rest of Nigerians, we just have to continue the education. And you, you, you guys in the media, you have a role to play. Civil societies have a role to play. Religious bodies have a role to play. And okay. community associations have a role to play. Okay. We need to get people out to vote. 30 million votes was what was cast in the last president. Uh, Mr. Gula, are you still there? Eligible Nigerians that should come to the ballot. We need to bring them to the ballot so that they can have a say in this our democracy. Well, I want to say thank you to Achike Chude. He's a political analyst. Uh, Nick Agule, who's also a political analyst. We want to say thank you to Carl Chinedu, whose uh, network was really bad. His connection uh, did not let us hear what he had to contribute. But thank you all, gentlemen, for being part of this conversation. We appreciate it. Thank you for braving the connection problem. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break. When we come back, the Secretary for the Southwest Agenda for Asiwaju speaks on the movement.